Welcome to the Private School Leader Podcast, where private school leaders learn how to thrive and not just survive as they serve and lead their schools. I strongly believe that it is possible to have a long and happy and fulfilling career as a private school leader. And my passion is to help you figure out exactly how to do just that right here on the Private School Leader Podcast. And I'm your host, Mark Minkus. So I love statistics. Not sure if you know that about me, but I really, really love statistics. And actually back in college, I started out as a business administration major before I switched to education. And my favorite class was um, stats class. And especially when it comes to sports, you know, you've got your completion percentage in football and your free throw percentage in basketball and batting average in baseball. And now they have all kinds of advanced metric and advanced stats. But I want to start today's episode by giving you a few statistics about social media. There are 4.2 billion active social media users worldwide. 4.2 billion. That's more than half the world's population are active on social media. 74% of Americans are active social media users. And that's a pretty high number when you think about the percentage of Americans that are, you know, babies or little children. 74% of Americans use social media. And the average American spends two hours and 25 minutes on social media each day. Now, social media is part of our everyday lives. And um, social media influencers have changed how companies advertise. Um, A quick example are Stanley water bottles. So, you know, if you're listening to this in real time, um, Stanley water bottles, very, very popular, very expensive. But just a few years ago, those same Stanley water bottles were all sitting in warehouses and the warehouses were full of them and they couldn't sell them no matter how hard they tried. Well, what happened? Well, at the time, the problem was is that they were, the company was marketing towards um, people who liked camping and hiking and kind of outdoors um, adventure type seekers, adventure seeker types. And, and that really wasn't selling. But what they started to do then was the company very shrewdly decided to start paying social media influencers to use Stanley water bottles. And then we know what happened. They started to fly off the shelves. They became extremely popular. And then many of them sold out. And listen, I love scrolling on Instagram as much as the next person. Social media connects us with family and friends all over the world. Um, I have three adult daughters that live in um, different states. And the fact that we can FaceTime or um, get on Snapchat or whatever, it, it's it's wonderful. And like most things, it can be good or bad depending on how we use it. And so today's episode is not about bashing social media or anything like that. But today's episode is about, we are going to discuss the five ways that social media is making you a less effective leader. We want to get a little bit reflective on our social media use and see how that's impacting our leadership at our private schools. So before we jump into today's topic, I want to say thank you for listening to the podcast by giving you a free gift. And this is called The Seven Steps to Having Successful Meetings with Upset Parents. This guide is an 11-page PDF that gives you a step-by-step plan to have better meetings with the parents at your school. Every good coach has a game plan, every good teacher has a lesson plan, but too many private school leaders don't have a plan when they sit down to meet with an upset parent. Well, now you have a plan, and you can grab this free guide over at um, theprivateschoolleader.com slash meeting. You can get the seven steps to having successful meetings with upset parents by going to theprivateschoolleader.com slash meeting. So I want to ask you a couple questions before we get into the topic um, of today's episode. Are you feeling tired or discouraged or overwhelmed? Do you ever feel like the pace that you keep is not sustainable? Does the school, the work from school tend to invade your weeknights and your weekends? Do you feel like work-life balance is a myth? 
Well, if you answered yes to any of those questions, then I want you to check out Thrive Academy. Thrive Academy is a new online course that I created just for you, private school leaders that want to get out of survival mode and get back to feeling energized at school. And listen, I've been where you are if you answered yes to those questions. I've had burnout. I've had in the hospital with ulcers, but I figured out how to make it better and I can teach you how to make it better as well. And Thrive Academy is an online course with 39 lessons and over nine hours of video content and an 86 page workbook with guided notes and reflection questions and calls to action and habit tracking calendars and more. And then you also get live office hours on Zoom for the first six weeks. And I really believe that Thrive Academy can change your life and also change the way that you lead. And you don't have to make all the same mistakes that I made. So let me teach you how to go from surviving to thriving. Check out Thrive Academy at theprivateschoolleader.com slash thrive, theprivateschoolleader.com slash thrive. All right. So I said that today's episode is about the five ways that social media is making you a less effective leader. So let's run through them. Number one, more distractions. Number two, less sleep. Number three, comparison is the thief of joy. Number four, communication pitfalls. And number five, the boundaries dilemma. So I know that when we get into five points and then there's different things underneath each point that sometimes, you know, when you're multitasking, it's hard to follow along. And I really hope that when you listen to this episode, when you listen to the podcast that you're driving to or from school or you're walking the dog or you're working out, that you're multitasking. And so I always try to take good care of you in the show notes and those can be found at theprivateschoolleader.com slash episode 72. And I also want to just say that this is not going to be a negative bash session about social media. These are going to be strategies to help us, you know, first of all, be a little more reflective and then some strategies to help us be a little more effective in the way that we spend our time and the way that we engage with social media. So number one on our list, more distractions. So let's face it, as school leaders, your days are packed with responsibilities, hundreds or even thousands of decisions, and all of the the tyranny of the urgent and the playing whack-a-mole with your hair on fire. That's kind of the job description of a private school leader. Well, the constant ping of social media notifications or the little vibration that happens when you get a notification from social media, those can be a significant distraction. And with Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and TikTok and WhatsApp and whatever's next, those notifications tend to add up. And if you're getting a notification every time someone likes a photo that you posted on Instagram or someone retweets something that you posted on Twitter, um, you know, that's going to add up to a lot. And um, brain research shows and productivity research shows that when you disengage from a task, that it takes on average about 70 seconds to fully re-engage with that task. And so if you're getting distracted, I mean, our lives at school are just like one long distraction. And so when we do get an opportunity to get some um, work accomplished, we're really hurting ourselves when it comes to um, this uh, having notifications turned on for social media. And here's the other thing I want you to know. The algorithm always wins. The algorithm always wins. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know that on your, let's just say Instagram feed, that if you're looking, if you're spending time looking at um, videos of dogs, you know, we have two dachshunds, two dash hounds, however you pronounce it, two doxies. um, And you know, my wife and I, we look at uh, videos of uh, doxies. Well, guess what? My algorithm is feeding me and what it's filling up with. I also watch some uh, NBA highlights, and I like um, action movies, and I like a, cer- a few different um, stand-up comedians. And so the algorithm knows that, and it just starts sending me things that are going to keep me um, on Instagram. 
And we live in the attention economy now. Really what it is all about is just how long can one app, can one social media platform maintain your attention. And I don't know that I've ever recommended on the podcast you to watch an episode of a, of on or a movie or a documentary, but I'll link it in the show notes. I'll link the trailer in the show notes. There's a documentary on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. It's about an hour long, maybe a little more, but if you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend it because it really gives you a peek behind the scenes. It's uh, interviews of a lot of people that used to work for all of these social media platforms, and it, they talk about how the algorithm works, and it's just very eye-opening, and I think it makes you more informed about how you engage with social media. And so what are the strategies that we can use so that we're not allowing social media to create distractions in our day? Well, the first one's pretty obvious, to turn off social media notifications at work. And for that matter, I would recommend you turn them off <clears throat> when you're not at work. But turning off social media notifications, um, the second one would be to set limits on the time that you're on social media. There are different apps for that, but it also could be setting a timer or, you know, I've done it, you've done it, where we're just scrolling and the algorithm is just feeding us all kinds of interesting content and we go down that rabbit hole and then we look up and all of a sudden it's like dark outside or all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, three hours went by. Um, another thing you can do is a lot of people do get their news, their headlines from social media. Maybe choose to do that another way, um, you know, by just having, you know, your preferred news outlet um, and, you know, have that be the thing that, that sends you those headlines rather than going to social media to get the headlines, but then staying for a long time or getting distracted with the other things that are there as well. And then again, be aware of that algorithm because the algorithm always wins. And I'll link that trailer to The Social Dilemma on Netflix in the show notes so that you can be more aware of how that algorithm works. And the attention economy is what it's all about. And so they ha if, if social media has our attention, that's fine. Um, and I've already run down all the list of all the reasons why the internet and social media are awesome, but sometimes they're less awesome, especially if it means that we're getting way more distracted at work and at home when we have that limited time at home with our significant other and with our kids and, and then we're in our phones. So, um, so you get the point. So let's go on to number two. So number one was more distractions. Number two is less sleep. And so, you know, it's all about screen time before bed. And you know all about the research about the blue light. And um, blue light emitted by screen suppresses melatonin production, and it makes it harder to fall asleep. You already knew that. And you might use social media as a way to unwind at the end of the day or catch up on news or updates or what's going on in the world or even in your city. Um, and I do that too. Um, but it really is very, very advisable to establish a cutoff time for screen use before bedtime. And I know you've heard that a hundred times, but when I get to the strategies, um, I'll tell you how, I mean, I didn't have the self-control to be able to pick a time to stop. So I did something else and I'll tell you about that in a minute. All right. So screen time before bed leads to less sleep. Information overload and stress leads to less sleep as well. So keeping up with social media can lead to information overload, especially if you as a school leader are using these platforms for professional networking or staying informed about educational trends, which many of us do. And then there's just this constant influx of information and it can contribute to stress and anxiety and just make it challenging to relax and fall asleep. And so it doesn't even have to be bad news. It's just that information overload can lead to stress. And then the third is rumination and mental activation. And so engaging in social media, especially in the evening, can lead to you ruminating on the content that you consumed. And so let's face it, a lot of the news out there is bad news. Um, and I'm not saying we stick our head in the sand and that we don't face the realities of what's going on in the world or in our community, but I'm saying that we need to be a little more selective about the time of day that we take that in. So discussions or debates or emotionally charged posts that are going to trigger you or 
they're going to activate the mind and, and they're going to cause you to ruminate and they're going to make it difficult for you to mentally disengage and relax because the day was stressful enough and then we're inviting stressful things in through our screen on our smartphone um, that are going to trigger us, whether they be political or, um, you know, just w whatever might it might be. Um, we just have to use some wisdom in that area. Okay. So then I said that I'm going to give you some strategies. So one is set a specific time to stop. And I think that's way easier said than done um, because of all the things I said before about the algorithm and the attention economy. But here's the one that worked for me. I didn't have the self-control to stop at a certain time. And so what I started to do was charge my phone out of my reach. And so um, I actually charged my phone just in the next room. We have a bathroom off of our bedroom and it's uh, plugged in right there. Um, and, you know, you might say, well, I can't do that. Like I have teenagers that drive or I have elderly parents or, you know, I need to be, be able to be reached if there's an emergency at the school. Okay, that's fine. Just charge it so that you can't reach it from bed. So then if it does start ringing or if it dings or whatever, or in the first thing in the morning it's going off because someone's calling off school, you can just get up and grab it. But I'm telling you, if it's on the nightstand, you're going to be checking email before you say good morning to the person that you share a bed with because that's what I used to do. So strategies, set a specific time to stop and charge the phone out of reach. Okay, so we're up to number three on our five ways that social media can make us less effective leaders. And number three is comparison is the thief of joy. And I want you to think about that quote for another moment. I'm going to read it again. Comparison is the thief of joy. When we compare ourselves to what we see on social media, it steals our joy. And our reality, everyday life, working and coming home and kids and stuff around the house and church and the car needs to be fixed and we need to pick up the some groceries and, you know, just the run the kids to a soccer practice, like all the stuff that goes on our reality. But if we compare that to the stuff on Instagram, that's not reality, that's curated reality. And so what I'm getting at is, so you go on Instagram and you see people you know and they're posting on a vacation or from a nice restaurant or at a concert or even at a Starbucks run and, and um, you know, the, the hair is done, the nails are done, or, you know, the outfit is all pulled together, whatever the case may be. Um, and, you know, Starbucks run is the, is the caption or maybe even just like they're kids are all, the family's all doing something together on a weekend, like going to a museum or they're at a park or whatever. And then what do we do? We start to compare ourselves to that. And we're like, man, be nice if I went on a vacation or it'd be nice if I could go to that restaurant or that concert or be that looking that pulled together at that time of the day to go on a Starbucks run or just even get all the kids dressed and in the car without murdering each other to go to a museum or a park. And then we, our joy is, is completely stolen. But here's the thing, curated reality, what they don't show you are the five fights that took place right before and right after the photo that was taken at the museum, or how long it took to get that outfit all pulled together for the Starbucks run, or how long they had to save for that vacation or to go out to that restaurant or how much debt they had to go into, okay? So reality versus curated reality. That's what we see on Instagram, on social media is curated reality. And if we compare ourselves to that, it's going to steal our joy. And the other thing that can steal our joy is the constant com exposure to the achievements of others on social media can lead to burnout or feelings of inadequacy or imposter syndrome. And so, you know, we follow, let's face it, sometimes we follow a lot of other school leaders, a lot of other schools, and they're posting about like this robotics program or this new turf field or this championship that they won or 
fill in the blank, you know, like honestly, that can really, really lead to stealing our joy, um, that constant exposure to the things that they're, they as a school or the individual are proud of, and that's great, but if that's what's filling up our feed, we can feel inadequate. And then the third point is, is that this comparison can create a sense of pressure, affect our self-esteem, and potentially lead to stress, anxiety, and insomnia. And that's the last thing as school leaders that we need is insomnia because that goes back to point number two about sleep. So what are some strategies to overcome this issue of comparison on social media? I think first is awareness, just to be self-aware that this is happening. And then the second is to set some limits on the amount of time and the time of day. And then the third and probably most important is to start a gratitude practice. And you've heard about, uh, I've, I've done this, um, talked about gratitude a lot. On the podcast, there was an episode, I don't remember the number, but I'll link it in the show notes about how gratitude can make you a happier and more effective um, school leader. And my point is, is that when you start to list the things that are in your life for which you're grateful, it makes it harder to be sad about comparing yourself, your life to other people's lives, to comparing your stuff to other people's stuff. Because we have some, we have a pretty great life if we just really think and stop, stop and think about it. And the way to do that is to have a gratitude practice. So I'll link that in the show notes as well. Okay. So we're talking about the five, um, the five things or the five ways that social media is making you a less effective leader. Number one, more distractions. Number two, less sleep. Number three, comparison is the thief of joy. And number four, communication pitfalls. All right. We know that stuff that we post can be misconstrued and lead to unintended consequences. So there's something out there and we like the post or we retweet the post or we repost it or whatever you do to indicate that you like what that person said. Okay. And then you know how many times that has come back to bite celebrities, politicians, um, leaders, um, sports, uh, um, famous people in, in the world of professional sports, whatever the case might be. And it's like, okay, well, do you really agree with this person? Because, and then fill in the blank. Are they anti-Semitic? Are they racist? Are they um, anti-trans? Are they what, you know, you, you're, you know what I'm talking about. And so, my point is, do we really have the time to go a deep dive on everybody that we, when we see a post, to know all the context and all the things behind it? And so communication pitfalls, we just need to be a lot more careful about what we like and retweet and repost and things like that. Okay. Another communication pitfall is responding too quickly. And let's face it, that's true in life in general, in things that in person at school, someone says something to us and boom, we want to just respond right back in their face. Or we get that email from the parents with all the capital letters and the exclamation points and boom, we just want to like fire off another email to them, you know, our response right away. And we know that's a bad idea. Well, I think it's even worse with social media because usually we're doing it in the evening when we're fatigued and our cognitive um, abilities are impaired because of the time of day and because of decision fatigue. And then we get wound up about something, and then what are we doing? We're there, we're arguing with somebody on the internet, or we're putting something in the comments that just, you know, because we're angry about it. And it's like responding too quickly, in my opinion, is never a good idea, and especially not on social media because then it's there forever. Someone takes a screenshot of that, and then that's going to come back possibly to bite you in the future. And then the third thing is to try and avoid engaging in public disputes or arguments on social media. Um, and so that could be with parents that are posting stuff. It's best to not post in that parent group or 
you know, it's really best to just contact that parent or parents um, privately by phone or by email and to not get into this public argument or dispute and and to get down in the mud there and and to post stuff and then people are going to choose sides. They're going to like your post and they're going to not like this parent's post and all this stuff. It's like, no, that's not how we're going to do this. Address concerns privately whenever possible and maintain your professional demeanor because public disagreements can harm the reputation of both the leader and the school. So we're not going to get into that, those public disputes and those arguments on social media. A couple more, avoid oversharing, um, revealing too much information about yourself, too personal, too vulnerable. You know, if you're feeling vulnerable, if you're feeling worn out, if you're feeling stressed out, if you're feeling, you can share that, find, call a friend, um, talk to a family member, um, send me an email at mark.o.minkus at gmail.com, but don't overshare in a post. All right. And then another problem, um, with these communication uh, pitfalls is to ignore stakeholder sensitivities. So, each school community is unique, and, and private school leaders must be sensitive to the cultural and social and emotional sensitivities of their stakeholders. And so you need to avoid topics that may de- be divisive or trigger negative emotions within that school community. And we have much, every year our communities become more diverse and more experiences. And so, you know, whether it's me- about mental health or whether it's about, you um, DEIB related issues or social justice or politics or religion or even like local government or or the national government, whatever the case might be, we as leaders, you know, we're allowed to have opinions, okay? We're allowed to be human beings, but to post those in a public forum and to, uh, you know, ignore the sensitivities of our school stakeholders, the the parents, the board members, the children's fam, yeah, just all of these people. We don't, we can't possibly know all the things that they have experienced, and so we just need to use a lot of wisdom. And so, that's actually the first strategy on my little list here on number four: use wisdom. You know, wisdom is just that knowledge and experience applied to non-specific situations where the answer is not easily seen. It takes a lot of wisdom to avoid these communication pitfalls. And then also take your time to respond. And then ask yourself the question, would I say this to the person's face? And maybe ask yourself that question twice. Would I say this to their face? And if the answer is no, then we already know that you shouldn't post it. All right, and that brings us up to number five, which are bound the boundaries dilemma, okay? So here we, we just have this blending of personal and professional boundaries at our schools and on social media, and I think that school leaders find themselves in some really challenging situations. So, for example, you know, do you follow parents? What about the ones that are the parents of your kids' friends in their grade that you're social with? Um, do you follow students? Do you follow graduates? Do you follow direct reports? Um, do you follow colleagues? Do you like everything that they post? Does it get exhausting liking everything that they post because you don't want to not like what they post because then they might feel bad? So it just gets really tricky when it comes to those that boundaries dilemma. And so I've got actually four pretty clear strategies for you when it comes to that. So First of all, number one is to clearly define personal and professional boundaries on social media. So decide ahead of time, not in the moment, decide ahead of time what aspects of your life you want to keep private and what you're comfortable sharing with a broader audience. For me personally, I just have a a community or or um, I just have a a specific um, Instagram account for my school and um, that's the only one that I use. And so I post stuff, pictures of the kids doing something cool in in, um, science class or at recess or at the middle school dance or um, on a field trip or whatever the case might be. And I just, you know, stay off of social media. Um, And I know a lot of you that you will have like two separate accounts and that's probably best. And then set that account to private so that you, 
are deciding who you're going to allow to have access to your content. So, um, and, and that kind of just really slides into this second strategy is, is that to just separate those out, you know, separate your personal and professional profiles. Um, and I just strongly recommend that, um, you know, the professional profile is for school related stuff, events, engagements, photos, and just keep your personal matters private on a private account that you control the access to. Um, and then number three is to set boundaries for communication. Um, clearly communicate your preferred channels for official communication. You're going to find that parents, especially younger parents um, in our schools now that are digital natives, they're going to DM you um, on social media, on Instagram, and that's how they're going to communicate with you. It's like, make it clear that you prefer an email, all right? Encourage stakeholders to use established communication platforms or traditional methods for the important matters rather than relying on social media. And if that hasn't happened to you yet, you might be thinking, that's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy, but it's happening and it's going to continue to happen as social media becomes more acceptable as a way to communicate. And so if your preference is email, A, don't feed the beast by responding to the DMs, um, but just make it clear to the parents how you prefer to be communicated with. And then the fourth point on how to um, solve the boundaries dilemma would be to monitor and adjust your privacy settings. And so just regularly review that and update your privacy settings in social media. Understand that platform's features to control who can view and interact with your content. And then this will help maintain a level of control of your online presence. And listen, you can have the that private account, but maybe it's just your family and extended family and a few close friends that are having access to that. doesn't have to be everybody. Um, And I think that that's super important to remember. Okay. So what are the big takeaways from today's episode? We talked about the five ways that social media is making you a less effective leader. More distractions. Um, The idea there is to turn off um, social media notifications, less sleep, my recommendation was to charge your phone out of reach from you on the bed and to pick a time when you're going to stop so that you can actually go to sleep and all the other things that are causing you to stay awake there that have to do with social media. Number three was comparison is the thief of joy. And I talked about how we are comparing our reality to someone else's curated reality. And that's going to lead to our joy being gone and it's going to lead to imposter syndrome And then number four is communication pitfalls, and that just really comes down to using wisdom and not responding right away. And then number five is the boundaries dilemma, and I just feel strongly the best way to handle that is to have a school social media account and to have a private social media account and to keep it private and then to be very selective about who has access to that. And then I like to end every episode with a call to action. And your call to action this week is to set aside 15 minutes this week to reflect on how you're using social media. And then just decide, is it, what is the one thing that I need to change? Is it the amount of time I spend on social media? Is it turning off notifications? Is it the bedtime thing? Is it the type of engagement and the way that I engage that I need to use more wisdom? So 15 minutes this week, think about how you use social media and then pick one thing that you'd like to change. All right, let's wrap it up. I've created another free resource for you called the top six ways to protect your school from a lawsuit. And this is a 10 page PDF that will help you to keep your staff and students safe and help keep your school out of court. And litigation is expensive and time consuming and very stressful. And this is a common sense guide that will help you be more intentional and proactive when it comes to protecting your school from litigation. So you can go to theprivatescluder.com slash lawsuit to grab the top six ways to protect your school from a lawsuit. That's theprivatescluder.com slash lawsuit. And again, thanks as always for listening to the podcast. And then one last reminder that I've created an online course called Thrive Academy, and I can teach you how to have a long and happy and fulfilling career as a private school leader, but that's probably not going to happen unless you get really intentional about boundaries and time management and your relationships and your physical health and your mental health. And Thrive Academy is an online course with seven modules and 39 lessons and nine hours of video content and an 86-page workbook. 
and we go page by page, strategy by strategy, step by step to get you out of survival mode and to get you back to thriving at your school. And you can check out Thrive Academy over at theprivateschoolleader.com slash thrive. And if you're getting value from the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. Shoot me an email at mark.o.minkus at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode and you can grab the show notes at theprivateschoolleader.com slash episode 72. A new episode comes out every week on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. And I'd love it if you would re- read, um, excuse me, if you would rate and review the podcast. Those reviews help the algorithm push that out as suggested content to school leaders all over the world. And I'm on Instagram since we're talking about social media. I'm on Instagram at the private school leader and on Twitter at the PS leader. And if you got value from this episode, I would ask you to please, please, please share this link with another leader at your school and an aspiring leader at your school. And I've been your host, Mark Minkus. I just want to say I appreciate you so much and the amazing work that you're doing and the difference that you're making in the lives of the kids and the teachers at your school. Thank you so much for taking some of your precious time to join me here today. And I'll see you next time right here on the Private School Leader Podcast. And until then, always remember to serve first, lead second, and make a difference.